horse racing, KFC, bourbon. What do all these things have in common? Louisville, Kentucky, and that's where we're going. We're going to have some bourbon, a little more bourbon, some whiskey. Guess what? I think we're here. I see a bridge. I'm really excited about this trip because one, I'm going to Louisville, but two, my sister is flying in to join me for the weekend, so I'm really excited. So we're all going to Kentucky, which is, I guess, a midway kind of place, and we're going to meet. She's my older sister. We both love food, love traveling, and love bourbon. I can't see. Ready? Done made it to Louisville. Headed out to our first recommendation, which is called Black Rabbit. It's a speakeasy. Knock, knock, because I know in Los Angeles, they got some really cool ones that I've been to. So I'm looking forward, we found one, and uh, looking forward to see what it is. You think about in the movies, you know, you go, you knock, a little door opens, you see two pair, a pair of eyes right there, and then password. And you're just like, what, what was the password back then? Because passwords are a big thing now with computers and phones and all that fun stuff. So it's like, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, Bob. Yes, thank you. So this is our first stop right here. So it's the speakeasy. I thought it was gonna be downtown. This is not downtown, but this is pretty cool. We're at the Black Rabbit. Come on, let's go check it out. Knock, knock. You say hi to you. She just peeked through. Oh, look. It's got the little knock and knock thing. Who was the reservation for? Well, it's Batman. What was it? It's Batman. Okay. That's cool. Look at that. Wow. And now watch your step. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Right. Go ahead. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, getting the speakeasy vibe. Yeah, go. Um, yeah, yeah. Hi there. How are you? Good. All right. Check this out. We got okay, so we went through a secret door that was in the lobby next to an elevator. Open it up. There's a bar, it's all dark. It's really, really cool. Come on, we're in a speakeasy, not in Louisiana, but in Kentucky, Louisville. Hey, thank you. All right, that was our first stop at our speakeasy, and uh, it was fantastic, did not fail. So, I ordered some bourbon, and the first one I ordered, they ran out of, and so he recommended the birthday bourbon. Uh, which was a good alternative, and it was delicious. It, it was uh, a lot of flavor, hit the spot, did the job. It's a very good sipping bourbon, but it was great. It was a great start to our lovely weekend for the 4th of July, for my sister's birthday. I'm very excited. We also had this little peanut butter cake dessert, which ordinarily I don't get peanut butter stuff, but they're you know highly recommending it and all this stuff so tasted it it was delicious had whipped cream on it and it, the peanut butter was not overpowering well it's time for some dinner and we're going to a place called jack fries which the uh original person who started this whole thing was a bootlegger and a bookmaker that is crazy yeah. to have you all here at Jack Fry's. I wanted to tell you a little bit about our dining room. We actually have this picture above the bar of Jack Fry's himself. He found the restaurant in 1933 and the clubhouse picture is a picture of him with a winning derby ticket with enough money on the winnings to open the restaurant. So the prohibition history was that when prohibition struck, Jack Fry's is a place that you could actually buy illegal liquor and packaged liquor. And so there's a secret door that nobody knows about actually. And it's hidden over here, I can show it to you, that leads downstairs into like a sub level basement. And it's nothing exciting, but that's part of where they hid the liquor. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, glad so, to have so you what my favorite is the shrimp and grits because it's a southern classic. Thank you. That's amazing. I can't wait. Shrimp and grits right away. That's what we're going to try. We're going to go see a secret door. June of 1980. We're going to go see a secret door. So this actually, where we have our glasses, pull it out of the way. You can lift it up. There's a light that comes on in the basement. Have you? So you've been down there? Yeah. It's like a postage stamp, it's dirt floor, it smells, it's a very specific Kentucky smell of limestone earth water. Yeah. And if you've ever been in a cave in Kentucky at all, that's what it smells like. 
was like, down there. So it's, it's like, you know, you wouldn't want to have guests go down there. Um, yeah. it's, not, it's just kind of an interesting part of the building. That's pretty and, cool. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing yeah. that. Happy birthday, Monica. Hi, camera. Hi, camera. Hi, Welcome. Hi, Jess. Hi. Are you so cute? Oh. All right, we're here at Jack Fry's. We just got our dinner right now, our main entrees. I got the ribeye, which was number one on their menu right here. Look at these lamb chops. Look at that. That is gorgeous. And look at this. The salmon. Oh, hold on. Let me try that. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, mm. oh. Mm. The cotta balls. Right. Yo, excuse me, I'm about to get a little taste. Happy birthday, it's my sister, it's her birthday. It's also the birthday of uh, America. Happy 4th of July. Thank you. <laughs> Breakfast, Butchertown. I don't know what it's called. Butchertown Bakery, Grocery. We're on our way to get some breakfast. This place came highly recommended. Uh, and also, if you look it up, it's like one of the top 10 places to try for brunch uh, in Louisville. So very exciting. Butcher Town, grocery, bakery. That's where we're going. And so excited. Now, now we're going to pull out. S'mores croissant, look at that. Mm. And a hot chocolate. So we finally got our breakfast here. What we got is a biscuit with egg, cheese, and bacon, and it is delightful. Whenever I see biscuits, I gotta get some spare biscuits and some jelly. Is this strawberry? Yes. Strawberry jelly, and then apple butter. I think I'll pass on that. And then the s'mores, croissant. <laughs> and I'm passing on the apple butter because um, I don't really like it. Um, I went to a place in, um, where did I go? That was Brown County, Natural House Brown County. They are known for their apple butter. It, was, it tastes like, um, Applesauce. Very good. I love apple everything. So I'll be eating all of this. So more for me. Once we decided we're going to go to Louisville, reached out to social media. I've got a bunch of recommendations. So thanks. And here's the thing. One story came in about this bar that used to exist and said, have you ever heard of Rhiney's South Sea Bar and Grill? Never heard of it. And so they had a really cool story that they were stationed nearby in Fort Knox on the weekend, went over to Louisville. So we did some research and the only thing we can find about this bar is a shot glass that's for sale on eBay. That's it, can't find anything. So maybe that's something we're gonna be looking for and asking all the locals like, hey, have you heard of this bar? That looks like a church, doesn't it? Doesn't it, yeah. All right, we just made it to Churchill Downs. Now the plan was to come down here and just kind of look outside and stuff, but we saw a sign for tours, so we're gonna go see if we can get in a tour because that'd be pretty cool. I mean, look at this. We can put a bet on a horse. Who knows? I just put my first bet on a horse about two weeks ago, did pretty good. Beginner's luck. Uh, but people get all into this. Like, some people are like, they know what the horse ate for dinner, for breakfast, that they all know. They get crazy with that. I Me, mean, I'll just pick one with a cool name and go for it. Come on, let's go check it out. And I realized you were coming here to the Kentucky Derby CD. And I realized I didn't have a hat, so what a great opportunity when I come in through the doors to wear a hat. That's a great color with your hair. Yeah, it really goes. So right here we have the, oh, the Sasquatch. Look at that. But no, you're supposed to dress up. I didn't dress up. Well, I have a button down, so it's fine. How about this one? So who won the race between you and Monica? I won. Monica, who won between you and... Zach the exact same pictures of him. What? Oh, so that's it. You were being a good sister and you yes. let him win so you could take pictures. Get up and do not accept ticket drop box for well call. A valid ticket is required for venue admission. There is no re-entry and no refund for Canadian events. What we have here is the famous Kentucky Derby Medjula. We added cherries. It's not part of the recipe. But I love a good cherry. I asked for a cherry because it's my birthday. He sure did give me cherries. The uh, the special drink here is a mint julep, right? Now in 1960, everyone kept stealing the cups. So they decided to, to raise the price and make the cups part of it. Now here's the thing. Uh, we broke one, so she went back to get another one. Me and Miss America over here and glasses over here, just handling glasses. 
Uh, we're going to the Taj that was recommended on Twitter by Laura. On our way. I am so excited. Let's get it. Come on. Let's Come go. On. Wow. Look at that traffic. No, it's the 4th of July. Oh, I see. It's a special. Yeah, it's one of the biggest races of the year. Oh. Yeah. yeah. For Chunk's birthday. Oh, yes. You guys seen Goonies? Yes. Oh, yes. I'll take some glasses. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're here at Taj. We're having a look at this slushies, beers, whiskey sours. Great environment. Nice little stop. We are here at a bar that's probably not around called Briny's South Sea Bar and Grill. It was been there in '59. <laughs> Walks in, warm bar like this. Center seat was open. Only one there. He goes and sits down on it. And they stopped him. They said that's reserved for Paul Morning. You know, uh, he was from Louisville, and of course he Hall of Fame, Green Bay Packers star. R I N E Y. Yeah. All right, we just finished with Taj. All right, we had uh, some slushies, some whiskey sours, some shots, all that stuff. Now, here's the thing. We asked about Rhinies. Like, have you heard of this place? He went, the, our bartender went to go ask about Rhinies. Still, no one's heard of it. No one knows of it. Where are you gonna find out? The search continues. Let's go. Yeah, I know you like you like this. Louisville Slugger. <laughs> There's Hunter. Yeah, I know you are. You like this. I have my whole bike through here. We in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Look at this, KFC. Uh, we're about to get some lunch in uh, Whiskey Row. It's gonna be fun. Happy birthday. Oh, it's your birthday. Come on, let's go get something to eat. Louisville, Kentucky. Where we will partake in more alcohol. <laughs> Wow. Happy birthday. It's your birthday today. Hey, well, why don't you come in and out of the sun and you can come in the air with us and come in the gift shop. We got a bar in there. He brings us the juice. No, see, I'm going to tell you, last I night I went to a speakeasy and I ordered some uh, bourbon and they didn't have it. And they said, well, what we have is the birthday. Yes. Old Forester birthday yes, bourbon. Sir. And I had it. It was light. So birthday bourbon was made for our founder, George Garvin Brown. Uh, it is one of our rarest bourbons. It's aged anywhere from 10 to 12 years. Uh, it's released every year, September the 2nd of every year. And it's like one of the most sought out models right now. Why September the 2nd? That's George Garvin Brown's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. They'll camp out like two to three days to have this. Yeah. What? Yeah. People will camp out. Yeah, last year it was, bourbon, five, yeah. it was five birthday days. birthday bourbon, they'll camp yeah. out two to three days so they can taste the birthday so bourbon. Five, yep. Day, right? yep. five days. Five days. Uh, the barrels yielding about 164 bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, with it being aged so long, you always hear about angel share. Yeah. It's a little bit that the angels take out of the barrels each time. So sometimes once you've aged them that long, we can open up a barrel and be completely empty. Really? Yeah. Just what, evaporates? Yeah, evaporation. The, the guy that created Angel's Envy worked at Old Forster for Brown Foreman. He retired and created Angel's Envy. That's why we're all family down here. Well, thank you very much. What's your name? What's your name? Shamika. What yes, sir. Scott. Yes. Shamika Scott. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, thank you so good. much yeah. for your. You're welcome. Oh, we're, we're going to go around the back, uh, front and join you guys. Okay. Okay. Right. A, a One more flight. question. What's your best story about bourbon? Well, let's say my grandparents migrated here in 1920 from High Point, North Carolina, and they were Cajun. My grandmother oh. drank a shot of bourbon every morning, and she lived to be 94 years old. That's the secret. That's the secret. That's it right That's there. That's it. Oh, that's awesome. Well, now we're here on Risky Row, and we're about to go uh, basically taste the street. We're going to go have a birthday flight. Ooh, this is only two. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. What are you waiting for? Let's go. So you've got a plethora of different distilleries down here. 
So if you're going to the left right down in that direction, you've got Angel's Envy, you've got Rabbit Hole. This direction, you've got Old Forester. And then down the road, you've got, you'll stop at Evan Williams first, and then you would hit Michter's, mm -hmm. and then you would hit Peerless. So you've got all of those up and down this road. Yes. I've never drank so much bourbon in one day. <laughs> Lillian, okay. where do I take my sister on her birthday to go eat? So you should take it to La Bodeguita. It's a wonderful place where you can have, you're going to be able to have live music, excellent food, fantastic food. It's a beautiful place where you can get a great cocktail. Yeah. Too. So in all Louisville, this is the place to go. That's a place to go. I, I really love recommend you. that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well known. Yeah. Here at the La Bodeguita. Now we're here. Let's go see if we can get a seat and. Have some food. What, are we, what is this sack? These are the mojitos. Thank you. Thank you. Now here's the thing, these are special mojitos for this weekend. Yeah. This is a frozen mojito. Frozen mojito. I do have both these. Thank you. I mean, look at this, the presentation. Every, as, soon as, you, as soon as you drive up and park, it's an old house that was converted into a restaurant. This giant property, and there's just colors and flavor and everything. This cult, the Cuban culture, it's a Cuban restaurant. And uh, so far, at this point, I mean, look at this, look at this environment. We're outside, there's just so much to look at. Everyone is just wonderful. Unfortunately, we're not going to be eating dinner here. We're going to go have dinner reservations later. But we're going to have some, some tapas, if you will, and the frozen mojitos. So you know what? Cheers to recommendations. There's a cow. Lemu is a French cow. <laughs> Muscles or pigs in a blanket? Yes. Pigs in the blanket. Okay. The muscles are good because you can take the bread and the leftover sauce. Oh, the okay. Muscles, We're you sold. Can dip. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll do the muscles, the pigs in a blanket, and the bread basket. Yeah. Okay. I'll get that started for you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. I have three choices, but I'm torn between which ones to pick. So the first one I was thinking of mom's steak and eggs because I love breakfast and it's a great steak place so they probably make a mean mom's steak and eggs. The second one would be the steak Diane Prime because I have enjoyed Diane's steaks before. And lastly the Texas red fish. And then maybe the jumbo sea scallops. So I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> what are you singing? Oh man. Well, it's kind of hard because there's so many things. One thing I was thinking was is the world-class Japanese Wagyu, uh, where it has a whole description of how they massage the cows right here. And they said while you eat the cow, they will massage you the exact same way that they massage the cow right before they slit its throat. Thank you very much. Mm, look at that steak. I think so. Better than the tomahawk I got you? Yeah. Mm. That was a damn good steak. So I just finished my steak. And uh, it was a wonderful steak. Um, it's their steak that they have here. The best, voted best steak in the world. Last five years, that's what they tell us. It was a great size and cooked perfectly all the way. Uh, medium rare. Uh, warm red center and a simple preparation butter pepper salt it's fantastic uh, so when I cut into it uh, it just it melts in your mouth you really don't need the knife uh, but the flavor and the texture is probably the best steak I've ever had and it was phenomenal and you taste the difference one, you put it in your mouth and it is just melting and the flavor is really, really good. I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, that was just fantastic. Thank you for such a wonderful breakfast. Well, happy 4th of July. It's time for some breakfast. We're gonna go to the Brown Hotel, which is famous for the- uh, The Hot Brown. It's a famous sandwich that uh, this hotel is known for. 
Uh, made it a long time ago. Some travelers came in, kitchen was closed. I grabbed some stuff, some turkey, some gravy, threw it all on top and said, here you go, it's the hot brown. Very uh, famous sandwich. It's basically an open face sandwich. A lot of people have their own version of it, but uh, you don't have the original. Let's go. And now you have the hot brown. All right, you guys, you ready? Let's go find Ronnie's bar. Come on, let's go check it out. Come on. We're on the search. All right, so the address for Ronnie's led us to the edge of a freeway there, which I'm sure that freeway was not there in 59. Um, but we got one more thing, one more shot at this. Uh, there is a place called South Seas. It's a 1301 story. We're gonna go check it out. It's six minutes away. Everything in this town is either 12 minutes or six minutes away. I like that. All right, put it in drive first. Let's go. Last chance. Here. All right, this place is called South Seas. Now here's the thing. Maybe it's some random separate thing, but remember this guy was a football player. Football club, champions. There could be a connection here. We gotta go check this out, come on. Zach, do you think, what are the odds? What are the odds we're gonna get anything besides I don't know? What are the odds? Let's see, uh, 100 to one. This is definitely not what was described as a long, thin, dive bar, but uh, who knows? They might have changed it based on what they needed, so. We came here because we had a story of this old bar that used to exist called Rhine's South Seas. We went to the address on an old uh, shot glass. Now, is there any connection? Was there a bar before here that there existed? There were two bars, but they were two places. Uh, that man running around is trying to help me right now uh, is the owner of the you, you He will okay. tell you, he can tell you where the South Seas is. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Getting yeah, something a little closer. The owner's here, South Seas. There was a pizza place before, but this is not the right location. The right location is the freeway. And that, we can't do that. You could stand there and ask for a drink, but it ain't gonna go well. But in the meantime, look at this. A pina colada painkiller. Mm. All right, so basically right. we came down, we've been looking for this bar, uh, Rhine's, and we found yours, the South Seas. Is there any relation to it? There's no technical relation, but I found that uh, derby glass. And there, I'm from Long Beach, California. There was also a South Seas. Um, it was, you know, it said between Long Beach and Anaheim or something like yeah. that. And when I saw those two things together, I was just like, man, it's like serendipity. I'm calling this place South Seas. So, wow. Yeah. So did, did you ever, do you, do you know anything about that actual I bar? I actually don't. No? Like, other than that, uh, I found that exact same derby yeah. glass. And, uh, that street is now Muhammad Ali. Like that street. Yeah. Exist. We just went and saw. It's like a Muhammad Ali street, and there's like a corner of a freeway right, right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because Paul Horning. Paul Horning. Uh, do you know the story about Paul Horning? I mean, I, I know stories about Paul. Horning. So that bar had a seat for Paul Horning there. Okay. And it was in the middle. Wow. Yeah. And there was the whole place was packed. So he goes and sits in that seat. I found the seat. And everyone turns and like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> So we came that's looking the, for it. That's the golden boy seat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, well, thank you so Dude. much. I know you're slammed, yeah. but you just completed our weekend, yeah. really. All right, so we just met Sean from South Seas. Let me, let, me, let me build you a story right here. We came into the bar, and literally no one was there. And as soon as we sat down, it just filled up. And there was only one waitress and uh, the owner, and that was it. And we've been waiting, waiting to try to talk with someone, and it wasn't going to happen. So we had a couple painkillers, paid our check. We're walking out, Sam starts talking to the, to the owner and tells him why we're here and we showed him the shot glass. He's like, I found that same exact shot glass and that's why I named it South Seas because of that one place. And he came, he came from Long Beach, California, which is where I went to college. Apparently there was a South Seas out there too. So he's like, this is fake, I gotta do it. And that's just a real cool term of events, a great way to end this. Well
devil chasing it with ice cold beer. Monica. Monica. birthday, we found ourselves in my truck in the parking lot where we were was kind of a question.